Right, let me check in with the second and final part of, uh, yeah, Noam's Noah's. The second and final part of The Fullness of Time by Kate Wilhelm, a 2016 novella, which in the first part of this check-in, I kind of went, all, I went, all right, uh, Wilhelm has kind of outlined a story where we have this this family, which has a genius Leonardo-level inventor uh, as, the, as the grand patriarch who's died a while ago, and a financial wizard who all of, he, basically every single financial decision he made was perfect. He never lost, never lost money, he seems to have stopped. And pretty quickly, it's like, all right, these two men fall into a sleep or a fit and when they wake up they get questioned by their handlers um, grandmother and wife and they and from this flows all all these amazing inventions all these amazing um, financial advice and pretty soon the investigative reporter researcher who is and the researcher who investigative reporter and the researcher go okay they can see into the future that is taken as a given so it's like all right we've right up right up ahead we've figured this out and indeed we get an interview with the next generation john who is somewhat seems to have been slightly has seems to have been bred for this purpose uh, going by what his father a disillusioned um kind of hor horrified um, alcoholic tells them about how he, the children were born and they're all they all have mental illness and they just want them he, they just want him to continue having more children more children with the with with the woman who is also not gr not doing great and yeah yeah so we're, we're, it seems like okay we're not it's not going to be like da -da -da -dun about this but it's going to be more about okay well if that happens how does this get how does this talent get exploited and, and what are the ramifications and what's going to be the kind of like the what is going to be the consequences and i, I was thinking about spider robinson who did a thing who did a stories uh the very bad very bad things i can't remember what it was called but it was people who had mind control powers and mind control and uh could read people's minds and like it was a really chilling story of people with this kind of godlike power and how they wielded it and how it was so difficult for those who fell into the clutches of that person. Whereas this story, just like, no, we stopped at the end. And have I missed something? I'm probably going to go list, look, read other reviews because it just sort of like, yeah, we stopped it. We kicked out the woman who was going to exploit it. And we're going to set up a foundation of, of a charity, a charitable foundation. And it's like... Is that it? Or is this the first half? If it that was it, then wow, that really sucked. It's well told. Um, it's efficiently told. I don't know if it's well told. It's efficiently told through the eyes of Mercy, which her name seems a little bit heavy, heavy handed of, of her having mercy with John, the fellow who is was in their clutches who didn't have particularly a useful power except maybe he's probably be useful for breeding purposes it was just like the story does not go anywhere i definitely have it's like i feel like okay you feel like that the woman who was controlling them lillian should have suddenly done a reversal on them no, she just shows up at Mercy's door as Mercy's coming home and shoots her. And she gets taken away for attempted murder. The end. It's like, well, that's disappointing. You're really expecting somebody else to have time, t 
time basically what is what no basically either what is what is supposed to be their talent is is that the grandfather father and grandson can they fall into a stupor and what they do is they transport into their the, they transport their consciousness into the consciousness of themselves however far in the future i, I think john's is only a little little hop Whereas the grandfather and the son were, for, were, 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 were further forward. I think the, the, the financial one was like 18 months in the future. Something like that. Um, yeah. So it's, it's rather... You're, you're expecting... I was expecting something to happen. But... It seems more like we just explicated this. We explicated how they're going to they're going to exploit it, and then we stopped it. It's like, all right, that seems like you didn't want to go on with the story, or you couldn't think of how the story went on, so you just sort of stopped and wrote that. But it doesn't seem to be particularly worth anything, or other than just a tossed off story that maybe you'd find in a magazine somewhere. It's like, oh. Okay, nothing you're gonna remember. And this was, I guess, came out as an audiobook. Um, I guess as an audiobook, it's fine because I got it from the library and I didn't have to pay anything for it. But boy, if I bought this, I'd be pissed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will leave it there. And, and the characters are pretty stock-ish characters. Mercy, Cat, Cracker Jack. They're, none, of them, none of them particularly live as, as, as distinct, oh, I'm going to remember these characters. Lillian is kind of just shrewish and angry. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that great. All right, I'll leave it there. More videos later.